Welcome to Mediria. This is Umar Tariq. I'm an international medical graduate, IMG, uh, currently working as an attending interventional radiologist and uh, vice section chief of interventional radiology at University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, Susquehanna, UPMC, Susquehanna. 13 years ago, I launched a website, Mediria.com, also known as umartariq.com, to help IMGs. And I've been guiding and mentoring IMGs since then. In today's video, we will be talking about the new six pathways to ECFMG certification. So let's start with a basic introduction. Before 2020, all IMGs and even American graduates needed to take USMLE Step 1 exam, uh, USMLE Step 2 Clinical Knowledge, CK exam, and uh, USMLE Step 2 CS Clinical Skills exam to be ECFMG certified. However, Step 2 CS was canceled temporarily last year because of COVID, and uh, last month it was eventually canceled permanently. So to make up for it, uh, ECFMG came up with five pathways last year for ECFMG certification for applicants applying for last year's match. However, that uh, certification was valid only for one year initially. So the only way it could be valid permanently was if you matched uh, at least for one year of residency training. So if you did, a, let's say, a transitional year or prelim surgery, prelim medicine, prelim me, peds, anything, as long as... Uh, it was done in an uh, ACGM, ACGME accredited program. So let's say, again, if you did prelim surgery or prelim medicine in an accredited program, you are now permanently ECFMG certified. But let's say if you didn't match or you didn't do a prelim or any RIP categorical training, you know, if you didn't do any of that, uh, so what happens to you in that case? In that case, you can use your temporary certification, which was initially valid for one year. It has now been extended for an additional year. So you do not need to resupply for ECFMG certification if you were already certified last year. Remember, the only way your ECFMG certification becomes permanent is if you did at least one year of training in an ACGME accredited program. So moving on. Yesterday, ECFMG uh, sent an email and they came up with uh, six new pathways for ECFMG certification. Before we dig into these pathways, let's talk about the OET exam, uh, Occupational English Test. So Occupational English Test is needed for all the applicants applying for these six pathways. Okay, so if you didn't take an OET exam, you need to take it before you apply for any of these uh, six pathways. Also, what I would like to add here is like, unlike the prior uh, USMLE exams, like step one, step two CK or CS, in which if you had an attempt, it would show up on your transcript. If you're failed uh, in an OET exam, even if you fail it once or twice, or how many times, it doesn't show up on your USMLE transcripts. So a failure in an OET exam doesn't really negatively impact your application because there is no way for the programs and the program directors to know about it. Now the exclusion criteria. No points for guessing the first thing in the exclusion criteria for ECFMG certification is ECFMG certification. So if you're already certified by ECMG before, you cannot apply for ECFMG certification again. Uh, that is if you had the permanent ECFMG certification. The second thing is if you passed your step two CS clinical skills exam before it was canceled, then you can't really apply for ECFMG part, uh, certification via these pathways because you are um, ECFMG certified via the traditional pathway. Uh, the third one is if you had an approved application which was valid only for one year last year, then you can use the, the same application from last year. It's uh, expiration date has been extended now an additional year. So you can use your application from uh, last year. The other two ones are uh, exceptions are if you were barred from taking a USMLE exam by USMLE or between August 2020 to January 2022, or if you were barred from ECFMG for uh, ECFMG certification. The inclusion criteria is that you had taken or at least registered for a USMLE exam uh, after January 2018. So this is a little tricky. If you took uh, all of your exams before uh, January 2018, then hopefully you are ECFMG certified by now. If you took, let's say, one exam before January 2018 and one exam after, 
then uh, you're still eligible because you took at least one exam after. And you don't have to take an exam. At least you need to be registered for the exam. So let's say if you took one exam before 2018, you can still apply on the basis that you are registered for taking another exam once you pass it. You know, ACFMD certification still has this requirement that you need to pass step one and step two CK. So if you pass step one, let's say 2017, and you pass your step two CK 2020, you can still apply because you took and register, you were registered and then took the exam afterwards. So basically, if you took all your exams before January 2018 and somehow you were not ECFMT certified at that time, I think only in that case it might impact you. So now moving on, uh, let, me, let me explain something that the pathways are ranked in order of priority. What does that mean? It means if you're eligible for pathway one, you should not and cannot apply for pathway two or three. If you're eligible for pathway three, then you should not and cannot apply for pathway five. The only exception to this rule is if, let's say, you failed your USMLE Step 2 CS exam once or twice, or as many times as you did, uh, then you cannot apply for uh, pathway one, two, three, four, five. Then you have to apply for pathway six. So moving on, let's talk about pathway one. Pathway one is basically uh, that you were licensed to practice in another country, preferably, let's say, your home country, you know, and it could be any other country, uh, but the important thing is that your licensure, license didn't have any disciplinary action on it. Uh, the license doesn't need to be necessarily current or valid. It could be expired, uh, but if it's old and expired, then it needs to be of any time after January 5th, uh, 2015. If you had a license uh, from 2014, it won't really help. You need to have an expired uh, or old or current license which uh, was given to you after January 2015. Um, also about this licensing thing, it's better to have your license and your documents sent to ECFMG directly from your organization rather than sending it to yourself or mailing it to yourself because in that case, you know, the entire process can take longer. So it's better to have your organization email directly to ECFMG. Now we do talk about uh, pathway two. Pathway two is, uh, let's say if you passed a standardized uh, clinical skill exam for medical license, and this could be a part of your medical education in your home country, or when you were seeking medical license in another country. So these exams could be anything like a CS or an OSCE exam, and these exams uh, need to be passed on or after January 2018. The examples are, let's say, PLAT Part 2, Australian Clinical Exam Part 2, Canadian Qualifying Exam Part 2. And, uh, you know, I, I'll try to list these exams in the description uh, or at least the link to them that hopefully you can look at that. Also, like I said, there's a, another option that if your medical school con uh, conducts these type of exams, in that case, that you can also apply for uh, this pathway too. But it needs to be uh, one of the approved uh, medical schools. So I'll try to put the list of approved medical schools uh, by ECFMG uh, in the description below. So let's say if you're from India, Pakistan, or any other country, and you applied for a medical license in uh, UK, New Zealand, Canada, uh, Australia, and you took one of these exams, then these exams could be considered uh, as a replacement of step two CS, and you can apply for pathway two for ECFMG certification. Moving on, pathway three, four, and five. So pathway three and four, uh, three, four, and five, uh, they are mainly applicable to student medical students of certain schools, and uh, these schools are handpicked by ECFMG for certification. Again, I'll put the link uh, in the description. You can look at them if your school is one of them then you're automatically you know, eligible for these pathways. But again, I will say, if you're eligible for pathway one or two, then you don't need to jump into these pathways. Moving on to pathway six, uh, which is evaluation of clinical patient encounters by licensed uh, physicians. Uh, remember, this is the pathway uh, for someone who has ever failed a cl clinical skills exam, the step two CS exam. And uh, this is also the pathway for someone who was not eligible for pathway one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, only in that case, you will come for uh, the pathway six. So uh, in this case, they haven't released complete details, but basically what they say is that you will be evaluated by licensed physicians. Let's say I'm an interventional radiologist currently practicing. So somebody like me, uh, and you, there will be a mini, mini 
clinical evaluation exercise, mini CEX, how they abbreviate it, and uh, you know you will be evaluated based on that. Uh, the details uh, will be out later, uh, but the applications for Pathway Six uh, will will begin in July 2021. Uh, what I suggest is apply as soon as possible, you know, for these pathways, uh, because you know this process takes uh, a lot of time. The earlier you get it out of the way, the better for you. Uh, so the online application process for pathways one, two, three, and four uh, is expected to open um, in April uh, 2021 this year, and like I said, for pathway six, it's expected to open uh, in July 2021. Uh, I think that will be a little risky, especially for. Uh, pathway 6 given that the match starts in uh, September this year. Also as per ECFMG's website, uh, these are not hard and fast rules. Uh, it seems like ECFMG is ready to bend a little bit on these rules as uh, what they say is like they will consider exceptions to certain pathways eligibility requirements for limited and uh, specific reasons. Now I'll quickly talk about the applicants who applied for residency last year. So first thing, if you match for a residency spot um, and you completed at least one year of training, uh, in that case, your one year of ECFMG certification is now converted into a permanent ECFMG certification. Let's say if you applied for ECFMG certification, you got the temporary one year ECFMG certification, but did you, not, you did not match for a residency. In that case, your ECFMG certification is valid for another year. You do not need to reapply. Uh, like I said, the expiration date, which was supposed to expire within a year, within a year, it has now been extended. Now, let's say if you applied for ECFMG certification last year, and somehow for whatever reason your application was rejected, and now you're applying for residency again this year, then in that case, uh, you need to reapply for. Uh, ECFMG certification via one of these uh, pathways. All right, that's it. It took a lot of hard work and hours of research to prepare this video. I'm already in attending and I had no reason to do it for myself. I shot this video in between my cases on a busy day uh, and I did this all for you IMGs. I hope uh, you guys learned something from it. Uh, if you did, please like the video, share it with others, subscribe to the channel, and ring on the notification bell. And like I always say, never give up, never lose hope. Bye.